Hey everybody, Princess Friend here. Before I start the video, I actually want to bring awareness to the ongoing issues with Rosie Gaines. Um, I am wearing my Rosie Gaines t-shirt that I got from the PRN alumni. Proceeds from every sale are going to Rosie Gaines who is having health issues. So there will be a link in the description. So if you have not gotten one of these shirts and they're really cool design, go buy one. So now on to the topic at hand. I've been thinking about it now that I've been uh, listening to more Diamonds and Pearls and around that area. I've been listening to some of the albums later in Prince's career and I've been thinking about Rosie Gaines a lot lately. A lot due to the health issues, but also kind of because she's just kind of in my music listening area right now where I'm just... Uh, I've, I've been getting her a lot in my shuffle and all kinds of stuff like that. And then I came to think about it is that even though she had a minor part as part of the kids' band on Graffiti Bridge, she didn't actually contribute anything to any of those tracks on that album, but she was just on Diamonds and Pearls and then left. And I always wondered why. So I started to do some research. And the reported reason is because A, Prince apparently didn't pay very well. <laughs> um, according to her, she had kids and she needed money to support those kids and what she was making as part of the MPG just wasn't enough. Which is odd because not only does she co-write a bunch of the songs on Diamonds and Pearls, was on the tours and she opened up his Glam Slam Club and she did lots of stuff and yet it still just wasn't enough money. And that should show you that, you know, the cost of living, even if you're a rock star, is still pretty high. The other reason that she said was that she was also getting a lot of flack from the other band members because she had such a prominent role um, that a lot of the other MPG members were kind of jealous of her and she couldn't take it after a while. And then the third and final reason, and this one is rumor, I, I don't have that it's definite, but the fact that she apparently was shopping around for her own record contract while she was with Prince and there you go. You know, she had been with a lot of different groups and she had been touring with people and doing music and songwriting and everything. Um, and Prince, I don't want to say found her because because she's a multi-instrumentalist and uh, has a powerful voice and is a creative person without Prince. Um, but Prince was, I think, the person who really kind of took her and put her on the map. And she had some success with him and then not very much afterwards. Uh, again, she kind of went back to collaborating, but never really got her big break that she was supposed to have. But honestly, for me, it's odd because I've listened to some of her solo albums and they're actually really good and she is a strong performer and she does a great job on almost every track that she does. But when she was in Prince's band, I think there were two songs, I think it was Daddy Pop and possibly Push off the top of my head, where she actually got a verse that she got to actually sing and whatnot. And the rest of her time with Prince was her repeating what he just said in a better, cooler, more gospely voice. Here's a few examples. It's your time. It's your time. You got the horn, so why don't you blow it? Blow it. I actually started to think about the effect that Rosie Gaines had on this. I think the first deep gospely voice that Prince ever had in his band was Bonnie Bowyer, but you know, she went with the Love Sexy band and he replaced her with Rosie Gaines. But then you have to think about it, like who came after Rosie? Prince was hanging out with Chaka Khan, Prince was hanging out with Mavis Staples. And the biggest one that comes to mind now is of course Shelby J. And a lot of them had the same kind of issue where if they were collaborating on stuff, a lot of it was that they were kind of there to accent him uh, and not necessarily to be their own performer and their own whatever. And it, it's his albums, it's his music, that makes sense. He, they're there to make him look good. But I can also understand why you may not want to hang out and do that for very long. Rosie lasted for one album, one recorded album, of course, because Prince and Rosie had recorded a lot of different tracks together, which is why she was um, part of my favorite version of Nothing Compares to You with him and Rosie 
gains off of the the hits and the b-sides but also a lot of the tracks off of chaos and disorder had rosie on them as well as call the law off of gold nigga who also uh she was on even though she had left the band and yet she was still showing up on in his music now they did come back and they collaborated again in 1999, where she came back and she was actually part of the 1999 remaster, which was really, really cool. And I loved seeing her back. It was just that, and then that was it. And then it's like, she kind of just went away. And again, like now that I'm hearing that she's having a lot of health issues, it's making me want to go back and check out some of her earlier things. And I think that all of us should. And I think that this was a fun, kind of talk just about, you know, where do people draw their lines and why would she leave such a successful band? And there were a lot of reasons. Uh, I have my own theories. Obviously, there's also well-documented theories, but what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments and uh, don't forget to hit me up on social media and Patreon. And uh, until next time, may you live to see the dawn. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. To reward yourself, why don't you hit the subscribe button? And make sure to hit that little bell for notifications uh, later on when we come out with awesome new videos. Have a good one.